Hi folks, there are one or two of you who seem to enjoy it when I talk about theory, at least theory of web development, so I thought I'd give you a little video and give you some of my thoughts about speed coding and how my personal philosophies have changed over the last year. So, by the way, it's really late and I apologise if I have to sound a bit quiet, not as exuberant as usual. It's, I do have neighbours, you know. Anyway, what I wanted to really uh, discuss was some of the changes that I've had with regards to speed coding. So the idea is, imagine that I'm sitting beside a version of me from a year ago. How does that guy compare with this guy? Well, there's a lot of things that we agree with and uh, that I was right about. I was 100% right when I identified that rewrite culture is one of the things that destroys productivity. I was right about that. One of the things that I did not realise last year, this time last year, was the damage that gets caused by frameworks depending on third-party libraries. Now, I did a whole video about that yesterday, and I'm not going to repeat that, but that's kind of a new thing, you know? A year ago, that wasn't on the radar, and it was only within the last six months I realised that these third parties are really slowing people down, you know? Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just watch my last video. But there's a couple of other changes I've made that are really, really subtle, and to the untrained eye, they might even look stupid. So, for example, the version of me from a year ago was really, really into shortcuts and minimum amount of keystrokes possible. So, I even built a desktop app for this called Nitro. Right now, there's a demo on the homepage of Speed Coding Academy, and it's like you do, and it builds a form, you know, there's a some other thing, and it's um, it worked for all of the major, not all, but a, a large assortment of the major CSS frameworks. So I was the shortcut guy, and I believed back then, about a year ago, in this idea of a standard way. Now, I still believe in that, and the idea of it, it's an idea that is basically taken from Toyota. Agile stole the idea from Toyota, and we're stealing it back. <laughs> and the idea is that, well, I've, I've spoken about it before here. Um, in the 70s, the car manufacturer Toyota appeared from nowhere and suddenly started producing more cars that were more reliable. The engines and so on had uh, much more, um, what's the word? They had smaller or better tolerance levels than any of the American or European cars. And Toyota just went from zero to most dominant car manufacturer on the planet. So they were doing something right. Anyway, a book got written by a guy called Jeffrey Liker called The Toyota Way. And it is a book that, it's kind of a dry read, but it's basically a book about the manufacturing process and how to make that as streamlined and efficient as possible. And at the heart of this is the idea of there being a standard way. So let's assume that um, let's assume that you're a developer and you build a contact us form. Well, you should have a standard way of doing a contact us form. And when you do the form, you should do the form as if it's the last time you're ever going to do a contact form. The idea being that if there's a fault, if there's a mistake, it can only mean one of two things. Either you did not follow the standard way, or the standard way has to be improved. Now, this is something that I speak about on video one of Speed Coding Academy. I stand by it. It's an excellent, excellent philosophy for both car manufacturers and web developers. In fact, it's a philosophy that negates the need for unit testing. Unit testing, and maybe this is a video for another day, but unit testing 
really destroys productivity. And so the standard way method allows you to get rid of all of that unit testing stuff, which is really cool as well. Now, there is a challenge with all of this. And again, I'm not saying that you should chuck it in the bin. I'm, I'm going to be talking about things that are incredibly nuanced here. And it's not difficult or complicated, but probably most of you won't get get this at all. Because if you took the version of me from a year ago, sat that version of me beside me now, and you said to the two of us, go build a discussion forum or go build a, an invoice system or whatever, that guy would be faster than this guy. But this guy is a better developer. And how can this be? Well, what I've realised, and I realised this even from just playing the guitar, anybody who plays a musical instrument, I know I've got um, Mark Knopfler watches the channel, you know who you are, and anybody who plays a musical instrument will know this, that if you play the same thing over and over and over again, let's say it's a scale, or let's say it's a particular guitar solo, or I imagine it's the same on the piano or anything, if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, and it becomes this crystallised thing, what happens is, you become very, very, very good at doing that one thing, but you become trapped in it, and you're not able to expand and evolve, you know? I became really good at playing Johnny Be Good from Chuck Berry, <laughs> but I wasn't good at playing anything else. You get locked into something. I've seen this before. Now, that's not a bad thing if you want to be a PHP developer or a JavaScript developer or a Node developer or an insert language developer. Great, good on you, best of luck. But I think that web development is now moving into a new phase because in the past, I mean, I got involved in the mid 90s. Back then, there was no web development, there was just the guy that was building the website. But then that thing broke off and we had web designers and web developers. Now somewhere in the background there was programmers, computer programmers, you never saw them. Nobody knew who, who they were or anything and they never went near the web for the most part. But as time went on, Sorry, I don't know that. as time went on, we got mobile developers, we got SEO people, AdWords experts, and on and on, on it went, front-end developers, back-end developers, and today, if you want to get involved in this game, it's basically like the original UFC, you, you know, sumo wrestler going up against the karate guy. We're all competing in the same arena, which is kind of bizarre, isn't it? I mean, who would have guessed? And... Because of the fact that we're all competing in the same arena now, like you are now going up against the, the C++ geniuses and all of that, that means that you have to really, really raise your game. And just as bro uh, brochure websites were a really great thing in the mid-90s, but they weren't really going to do much after the dot-com bubble burst in 2000. I think that at the highest kind of um, levels of web development, we are now at a stage where we have to go beyond a database and a nice design, quite frankly. And I remember seeing a TV show fairly recently that woke me up to this. And I'm sure you've you've seen it. It's called Dragon's Den. I think the American version's called Shark Tank. But it's these entrepreneurs pitching ideas and you can see the thing on YouTube. But somebody came in with a really cracking idea for a web app. I thought it was a great idea. And the dragon 
you know, the kind of rich entrepreneur say, that's a terrible idea. All you've got is a database. And I was like, what? And then I thought about it, I thought, that's actually true. You see, most of the sites I've built, maybe even all of them, the sites I've built that have gone on and done well, have all basically been databases. Somebody once said that a web app is a database skin. (laughs) Think about that. What a reality check, right? You are in the business of building database skins. Well, here's a thought. Think about the latest apps that you got, maybe even for your phone or anything. I mean, for me, I have an app here that I got for my phone and I I check it out. <laughs> I don't know why. I find it interesting. I have this app and let me show you it. I don't know if you'll see it on this screen. Here it is here. I look at this app all the time and what it does is it shows me the position of the International Space Station. And I get a little alert when it's flying overhead and I can go and look at it. And then it shows me a radar. Okay, and on the radar, I can look at the angle and the time and I can see where the moon is and Jupiter and everything. Now, it's not even particularly useless, but I like it. And it's a great conversation starter to say, hey, there's a space station, even random strangers. You know, it's, it's cool, right? I like it. Now, that is not just a database skin. This thing will tell you the... I mean, right now, the, the space station's going to fly overhead in 20 hours, 51 minutes and 13 seconds. That's not a database skin, right? That's something else. Just before coming on, I was looking at uh, a Chrome extension. I was actually looking at a few of them. I'm looking around for a Chrome extension that can help with grammar and spelling. There are a few of them. And again, all of the market leaders for that stuff are using AI. You think about the password managers, the crypto alert stuff that you might want to build, or the, the stock market analysis apps and all of that type of stuff. These types of apps are beyond a database and a nice design. And I think that the time has come where we have to start thinking in these terms. And if you're going to be competing at the highest levels of web development, and I want to compete at the highest levels, then you're going to have to probably start getting quite serious about becoming a polyglot programmer. That means somebody who knows lots of languages. Forgive me if I'm bragging. I can build Chrome extensions, desktop apps and web apps. I'm hoping to soon add mobile apps to that list. And I think it's really something that's more than just a a nice thing. As time goes on, I feel as if it's kind of a necessity. Now, to go back to the speed coding, as I was saying earlier on, the DC of last year would have been faster at building PHP apps because he would have been into all shortcuts and all of that. And I don't really use them these days. However, this version of DC is more well-rounded than that version. And the truth of the matter is, I don't really want to crystallise anything. I want to stay kind of loose and free, you know, like a jazz musician or something like that, able to improvise and move from one thing to the other. So it's an incredibly nuanced thing. But I'm not quite as regimented as I used to be. So you could have me um, build, I don't know, let's say 10 discussion forums and every time I build it, I would do the thing slightly differently, you know? And these days, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's 
strangely kind of a good thing, you know. So, um, I think these are certainly two areas where my opinion has changed. Again, I'm not into third party libraries and the other big change is I'm not quite as crystallised as I used to be because I think that we have to get really, really serious about learning other languages. And if you have a crystallised version of doing something and then you move on to Swift or something else or whatever you're into, you're going to run into problems. So I'm all about flexibility these days. I no longer would describe myself as a PHP developer. And I think that's enough for now. I hope you found this interesting. I'll talk to you again soon.